Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the effect of adding multiple jamming pods to a single unit as far as detectability goes. So uh, switching around real quickly, on a red team here we have this handy dandy, this is a tall rack, this is the Nebo M. This is a very, very, very large radar and a very, very capable radar for detecting things at long ranges. On the receiving end, we've got ourselves a B-52H, and uh, basically we've stored everything internally, and we're going to make some electronic modifications to this B-52 just to try things out and see if it makes an impact on as far as adding more offensive jamming pods. So what I'm I'm going to go to sensors. Uh, obviously, we've got tons of different tools here. So I'm going to go ahead and move that one. We'll go ahead and get rid of that one. We'll go ahead and get rid of that one. A couple of radar returning receivers. That sounds pretty good. I'm not going to worry about too much. So we've removed all of our electronic warfare gear on here at this time. So what I'm going to have him do is uh, go ahead and fly directly over that radar and see at what distance does our radar actually pick him up. And then we'll go ahead and try adding some of the jamming and see if we can affect that just a little bit. So actually, what we need to do is back our uh, B-52 up even more because unfortunately, this guy has a really, 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 really really long range so we're we'll going to put them all the way back there save our scenario switch back to the other guys should have god's eye view let's go ahead and pause and see how long it takes to pick up a b-52 here again the b-52 is a fairly large target so it shouldn't take too long oh that was nice okay let's see here take a look at our message log new air contact new air contact at a distance of whoo 250 nautical miles so uh, we could definitely benefit from some electronic attack here so let's go ahead and uh, reset the mission real quickly go to blue team We'll go ahead and grab our B-52, and the sensors, we're going to add in a single uh, jamming system here. We'll do an A-N-A-L-Q, because uh, everybody loves the A-N-A-L-Q. Oh, uh, it's the one I'm going to play with today. Let's see, we have some D-E-C-M. I really, actually, you know what? I'll keep it nice and simple today. I'll do o a generic O-E-C-M, and we'll go ahead and call it generic 2000s O-E-C-M. I think that's fair. So we'll go ahead and close that. I'm going to go ahead and turn the jamming mode on. And we're going to switch to the other side and see if we can pick up that target at less than 250 nautical miles, which is what we'd expect it to be. So we'll go ahead and unpause. We'll go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. And pause. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what happened here. So in this case, uh, my jammer was running full blast. Uh, we were absolutely bombarding that sucker. But as far as I can tell, and I think this is uh, going to be something kind of interesting, is the fact we picked up the target at exactly the same distance. As a matter of fact, if we take a look, we picked them at a newer, at a farther out distance than we did previously. Now you're probably sitting here going, wait, that makes no sense. Weren't you trying to jam that guy? Of course I was trying to jam the guy. How come he wasn't jammed? Well, take a look real quickly here. And this is an interesting concept that you're going to have to kind of keep in mind. You'll notice that my search and track band here is the B band. Now, if I go switch over to my handy dandy B-52 real quickly here, my B-52 with all its uh, fancy pants electronics here. Uh, let's see, generic OECM. Let's go ahead and take a look at that actual sound. I don't know. Actually, we may not have access to that sensor. That would be too bad. Oh, it is. We don't have it. Shucks. So our generic OECM does not have the ability to jam on the B band. It actually has to jam on higher bands. So in this case, it just made itself more electronically obvious, which I goes to show you, you want to be kind of careful with these kind of things. So let's go ahead and reset everything again real fast. Go ahead and grab my little blue guy, put him back over here, and uh, let's give him something that actually works this time. So let's go into here, filter by kill keyword. I'm going to do a 99 because the 99s are easy. Let's go ahead and get the one I like. Let's say ICAP block 86. Ooh, the X. Oh my gosh, that one's like cheating. We're going to go ahead and add one of these. This is an ANALQ99J. This is more than powerful and capable enough to a block on that particular frequency. So I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. Remember, we only have one jamming pot operating at this time. So let's see what happens uh, when we go ahead and run things. Speed up time. Nope, oh, he's jammed. He's jammed. He's jammed. Run. Oh, and he's been detected. Let's see what distance we were able to actually identify our new air contact here at a distance of 104 nautical miles. Interesting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go reset our scenario real fast. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a second jammer onto this one. Now we're doubling our jamming power here. So we expect the range of the target to be reduced by about a quarter. Again, that's just doing some really, really quick uh, fake math here. Let's see, A-N-A-L-Q, 99 Juliet. That's the 89, that's the 89. Boop. Now we've got two of them. So we're going to go ahead and uh, shut his jamming off, and then we're going to turn his jamming back on, just to confirm that both are operational. Good. So we're going to go ahead and switch back to the other side. Red team. Go ahead and unpause. So remember the last time we picked them out at 105 nautical miles. Let's see what happens this time with double the jamming power. Pause. Let's go ahead and see how we did. Let's pop it to new air contact, new air contact bogey. 103 nautical miles. Now you're probably sitting there going, that was a two nautical mile difference. I thought you said we're going to have a quarter power change. Hmm. So let's see just how poorly this actually scales. And I think this is actually really interesting. So let's uh, switch back to blue. Go ahead and get our B-52 one more time. 
We'll go back over to our sensors, and we're going to go ahead and add uh, five of these, because, you know, why not? We'll do 8 and 8 LQ, 99 Juliet. That's the one. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, yeah. So now we've just converted uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Now we have five of these things. On, on. Check my sensors window. Oh, yeah. Now that's what I call electronic noise. So let's go ahead and switch back to red team. And I'll go ahead and see how five have an impact on the actual detection range here. I think you'll find this kind of interesting. Our range of detection went up. <laughs> so now the reason this is significant is because you're going but we put so much electronic power onto that radar there's no way they still would have been able to burn through and detect us believe it or not it doesn't make that much of a difference by adding more jammers at least in this uh, universe in this game i should say one of the big advantages of adding multiple jammers is it increases the amount of variety of techniques that you can use and also forces the other guy to have to kind of split up the different types of powers and also again remember jammers usually are going to be hanging outside of the attack and jamming inwards versus basically going along with the ride. It's a big difference. And the other thing, as we saw in our earlier example, if you jam on the wrong frequency, you can't really safely jam it. So if the enemy here had like nine different radars and they're all in different frequencies, our single jamming pod would only be able to get a couple of them, at least well. Now, if we had nine different radar style frequencies and we had nine different jammers, we could successfully jam each one of those frequencies in turn. And that is something modeled in command. So hopefully this video is a little interesting. Like I said, it's always kind of neat to run these little experiments to kind of see the misconceptions versus the reality. And it gives you a pretty good idea of just how effective or, if you want to think of it another way, ineffective electronic attack can be. Enjoy.